thank y'all for having me today. I'm going to talk a little bit about infrastructure, but I really want to talk about focusing on planning because in our in our world, you don't know. In our world, if you don't plan well, you don't get good projects. Um, we have a mantra at the Water Dome Board, the better the science, the better the planning, the better the planning, the better the projects. And just to uh, build on some other people earlier, the IIJA, the big infrastructure plan, Texas is getting lots of money for different pots. The Water Dome Board is getting about $2.9 billion over five years. And so that would go in our SRF programs. But a big portion of that is for lead service lines, which Texas doesn't even know what we've got for lead service lines, and emergency contaminants. So that's something we're going to have to figure out where the problems are, where the needs are. So where we go in there. So you, you might have, for those of you who've been on the planet as long as I have, you know, you may remember Dr. Doodle. How many people remember Dr. Doodle? Not Eddie Murphy and not. Robert Dill, yeah, <laughs> I'm talking about the original 1967 flop of Rex Harrison, which I didn't know it was a flop until recently because when I was six years old, I thought it was a great show. But, uh, you know, one of his famous animals is Push Me Pull You. I actually have one of these little balls. So Push Me Pull You has its head on both sides, so you pull it in different directions. In my mind, that's kind of the epitome of planning for water supply, bringing water to people, and trying to get water away from people. Sometimes it's exactly the same same areas. So usually two heads are going in opposite directions. You know, you're not getting anywhere. But we're trying to do both these at the same time. So a little bit about our agency. We were created in the 50s as a direct result of the drought of the 50s. So the legislature looked and said, we have this massive drought. We're going to continue to grow and prosper. We have to get water supply. We have to plan for future water supplies to meet our growing needs and economics. So we were created, developed a 50-year state water plan. And we also give them tools to implement that state water plan financing. As you can see from our mission statement, we're trying to lead the state's efforts to secure a, a secure water future for Texas. In the last two sessions, that's become not just water supply, but also a flood, all water. Less water, wastewater, and blood. So it's kind of a growing our mission. So like I said, we do science, planning, and then uh, implementation. So we do different, different science stuff, like uh, you know, surface and groundwater availability, the, the, the uh, new data brackish aquifers, that's a big thing in Texas. You know, and then all that data feeds into the planning process. You need to know how much people work you're going to be, where the water is, how much water is available, and how much you're going to need. And then those planning efforts inform the best projects. So unless you know where you're going, as you can notice in the, the little red dot up there, Flood been inserted into the planning. We've always done planning for water supply, and now we're doing flood for water, uh, planning for flood. So, like I said, water supply. Why do we do water supply? In Texas, drought is constant. Uh, and this chart, this chart shows, in somewhere in Texas, there's always a drought. Right now, we're in drought in parts of Texas. So, if you look at 2011, the whole state is in drought. But very interesting too. Before the 2015 World Day floods, the state was in the middle of a major drought. Reservoirs drained, aquifers drained, and within a month after Memorial Day, 37 counties were declared flood disasters. So it happens that fast. Uh, the problem in Texas is, you know, we get a lot of rain, so the columns all at the same time. As you can see here, this is probably pretty, most people know this, that blue line is I-35. So most of the population in Texas, I think about 70% of it, is on or along I-35 and east of 35. So, you know, east of that line gets anywhere from 35 to 54 inches of rain a year. West of that line is from 30 down to 10. So it looks good that world population gets the most of the rain, but also it looks bad as world population gets the most of the rain. So as you can imagine too, you draw that, that line at 35, that's where all the water needs are too. Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin, San Antonio, Metroplex, Houston, and then the Valley. It makes kind of sense. So the state water plan, which is just finished in 2022, projects that if water supply needs, if all the infrastructure is not built for the water supply needs in the future, we'll be short 6.8 million acre feet. 
Now, a lot of that is, is agriculture, but the municipality has 3.1 million acre feet in shorts. We get nothing. So, put that in context, uh, an acre foot serves about three and a half households annually. So, we're looking at a shortage of 860,000 households, or 2.3 million Texans. You know, somebody mentioned a while ago, there's 1,100 new Texans, not necessarily moving into Texas every day, but 1,100 new Texans every, every day, and none of them are bringing water with them. So, how we, how we serve those needs of growing population. So, what, we, what we've done is, for the last 50 years, we've developed 16 regional planning areas for water supply. These areas are, these are local areas that plan for themselves from the bottom up. Uh, they were determined primarily along water usage areas. So, for example, in the North Plains, it's all local aquifer. <laughs> However, Region A up there is mainly rangeland, so they have different needs. And then Region O, around the Lubbock area, is a lot of cropping, so they have different needs. They're planning for the same aquifer with different needs, and so they have to they need to plan differently. So this this. The state water plan is 16 regional plans, which then developed into one statewide plan. Uh, you know, we can mine 1,900 pages into 203 pages. It's all up there on the web with the interactive portions. You can see where your water supplies would come from. We've had companies come to us and say, we came in looking at places in Texas, and one thing, the first thing we looked at is their water supply for the future for there. If we're gonna expand this area, there's gonna be enough water for the future for our community, for our project, and for uh, the citizens we're hired. So there's 1,500 management strategies in the state water plan. 2,400 of them are specific projects. So these strategies range from education to major reservoirs and pipelines. So the total cost of these implementing all these strategies is $80 billion. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. Uh, and should another drought of record hit without us implementing these strategies, the cost of Texas would be estimated $151 billion annually in economic losses. If we don't implement these strategies, if we don't, don't implement, these, implement these strategies and the drought hits again. Mm -hmm. So I said we focus on science and planning, but we also do the implementation projects. So through our state water implementation fund for Texas, or SWIFT, We've already committed over $9 billion in projects to implement water supply projects. That $9 billion in funding creates 105 million acre feet of water supply, new water supply, spread across, all across Texas, you can see here. One of the biggest projects in the nation going on right now is in Houston, where we're building, we're going from 80 MGD plant to around 400 MGDs. And that's bringing water from the, from the Trinity River into Lake Houston, and distributing all around the Houston area. North Fork Bend, West Harris, it's a huge project, it's billions of dollars of projects. So mainly you get off groundwater because the groundwater is sustainable for three or four million people. So when you get some siding, so that's getting off the groundwater on the surface water. So while we, you know, nine, nine million dollars in six years, that's a pretty good dent, but we still have a long way to go with million. The previous slides were all about water supply. What about flood? That's our new initiative. See where we got today, just look at precipitation in the last two months. So in December there, you can see that most of the state was way below annual precipitation. Within the next month, in some areas, if you look down there in the San Antonio area, they received three to 400 times what they normally get. These rain bombs come all the same time. So it's just, flooding is, it is can be quick, while drought is a very slow disaster, flood can be a very quick disaster. So, what really makes it tough is that sometimes you have drought and flood at the same time. So, if you look at these uh, these maps here, over like counties that had flood disaster areas during the same month that they had drought. So, this juxtaposition can be very hard for decision makers. You know, you've only got limited infrastructure dollars to spend. So. Where do you spend it? You bring water to supply to grow your communities, or do you build infrastructure to help hopefully mitigate flood if and when it comes? I mean, the same people are paying for both of them, so you've got to figure out where you need the dollars. 
So why is flood planning very important? The Hurricane Harvey hit, we all know about that one. Uh, it's very devastating. Hurricane Harvey affected over 50 counties in Texas, 30% of the population in Texas. You may remember, that I talked about that $150, million economic, $150 billion economic loss with the flood, with the, the uh, drought. Hurricane Harvey created $121 billion in economic damages in just a few days. So flooding is extremely damaging, extremely damaging. You know, the devastation of the Texas economy caused the legislature to act in 2019 by passing Senate Bill 7 and Senate Bill 8, which expanded our role in flood planning and also uh, mapping and mitigation and financing. So, you know, flooding and mitigation is not important just for the coastal areas and not just for popular for, uh, property. Texas leads the nation in flood fatalities. That's, that's a big difference there. 212 versus the next one is 63, I think. That's, we are big, but still, a lot of Texas is pretty sparse. And a lot of that comes because of the way Texas floods. You know, the area east, west of Austin, where I grew up, where I live, is called Black Flood Alley. Those, those rains come so fast, and the water moves so fast that people are, are not aware of it. The more late floods in 2017, or 20, 15, 16, in Blanco area, people didn't know the water was coming up until it was taking house, they were floating down the fields of their houses. And they had rain gauge or flood gauges at the river, right there in town, but they had no idea what was going up on the street. And so one of the things, initiatives we've done is put rain gauges upstream of areas that flood. So they know what's coming. And so that's one of the big, big initiatives we've done with our, with our funding. Additionally, devastation of floods not limited to Fletchland Alley. Uh, this map shows the properties that have been damaged multiple times, called severe repetitive loss. Um, we look at it all across the state. So it's not just the coastal areas, it's anywhere. Flood can happen anywhere in Texas at any time. So what are we doing about it? So Senate 8 establishes the flood planning process. So the plan for future Texas Flood mitigation mm -hmm. board established 15 regional basins, flood groups. As you can see, they're a little different than the, the floods, the water supply planning because we did them by a river basin, which makes sense. So Texas is so big and such a huge river basin, we've had to split some of them up, namely the Red River, the Barrett Prize, and the Colorado. But these are all about basins because flood happens with basins and, you know, they don't, it doesn't follow county lines, it follows river lines. These are all voluntary positions. We reviewed 800 nominations for 180 positions for initial planning, planning groups, and those will be the duration of the five-year cycle. So the legislature also established through Senate Bill 7 the Flood Infrastructure Fund. So the board established four categories for that fund. What we heard in our uh, 2017 statewide assessment is that decision makers did not know what they did not know. I mean, they didn't have studies done. They didn't know what was happening upstream, what was happening downstream. So our number one, our number one category of funding was, we call it category one, it's for regional planning studies. And so, um, so they didn't know, most people are planning for their little local area. But when you plan, and there's only two ways to deal with flood, either hold it to you release it later, or get it away from you as fast as possible. So you can imagine that causes problems with the neighbors, either upstream or downstream. And so we made them do studies on a, system-wide basis on a, at least 10 basis, which is pretty large. And also, every project we funded through this, this initiative, they have to get a sign-off from their neighbors upstream and downstream that they know what's going on and they agree with it. Because that's one of the things we found, you know, city, city X is doing a project and see why knows nothing about it, and all of a sudden they got more water than they, they've ever seen before, that's not a good thing. Another thing that we found that through our stakeholder assessment is that decision makers didn't have tools to assess what they've got. So the legislature appropriated mapping and modeling funds for us. Uh, one of these is the base level engineering or BLE. These models give you kind of an extent of model of flooding in particular areas in different scenarios. And so these BLEs feed into an infirm toolbox. And so an example is the infirm toolbox. This is this is City of Waco. You can see this, the Brazos River running through it. 
And so with the infirm toolbox, you can run different scenarios of what happened to the flood. So this scenario here, on the left, it shows the depth of the water from this is a moderate flood, I think about 30 feet. So you see the blue and the yellow. The yellow is from three feet of uh, depth of water. Blue is about 10 or more. And so also in this infirm toolbox, you can turn on the scale. So on the right hand side, you see everything in the red are, are houses or facilities that are affected by this flood. So it's really easy to see different scenarios. Okay, if the water comes up here, who else will be affected? We've also overlaid parcel data so that you can even tell how much value gets flooded by the different levels, how much, how much damage can be done, which is really important when you're trying to get uh, FEMA to give you money for disaster recovery. You need to know how much that cost and how much value, how much value was, because that's, that's how they calculate the, the, the fact of my funds you get. So the flood planning timeline is they got five years to do it. Now, with State Water Plan, we had 60 years of data and 60 years of, of practice doing this. These guys have started from scratch. Um, it's been a very challenging for everybody because a lot of things are not available here. So, as I mentioned, there's still a number of holes in the data, and there will be, even though it's through the first plan. The first plan is due to us, draft plan from regions in August of this year. We'll look at it and give them some comments back and forth, and then they have to adopt by January of next year. And then a year and a half after that, we have to adopt the statewide flood plan. So the regions who are doing most of the work don't have a lot of time. It really has three and a half years to get this done. So we realize that that's not a lot of time, and there's still some studies ongoing, which we funded and other people are funding. So after their adoption of their state, their regional plans, we highly anticipate there'll be amendments to the regional plans. As more studies come in and as more projects are developed, we can amend those projects before the, state, the first statewide plan. So one of the reasons to be in the state plan is that if the legislature appropriates more money for any flood project, you get state money, you have to be in that plan. So it's very important. And that's one thing we're having a hard time getting the word out to all these communities. It's like, if you get the project, bring it to your regional group to get it in the plans. If you don't, you probably won't get the funding for it in the future. So participating in this is very important for the future. Like I said, so, you know, statewide, first statewide plan in Texas. And first, I don't think I know of any other state that's done a statewide plan. We've done, they've done some in, in little increments, but nothing at this scale. You know, like Texas, we don't big, but sometimes you to go bigger your home and hope you don't have to go home on this one. But it's a, little, it's a challenge, it's a challenge. So, um, let's see it's very challenging for us to, who've been doing statewide planning for bringing water to people for many years, 50, 60 years, and now all of a sudden doing that backtrack and say, okay, now to get water away from people. And a lot of times it's the same people. Like I said, the biggest project we've got, the worst supply is the city of Houston. Also the biggest flood risk in the last few years is the city of Houston. So how do you pay for that both ways? It's very, flooding is very expensive to mitigate and also to, to recover from. Mm -hmm. And there's not a dedicated source of payment for that stuff. It's more like an insurance uh, policy that you have to meet. So people can see the, the, the uh, benefit of water coming to me in my turn my tap. It's hard for them to see the benefit of a, a uh, detention base that's strained from them until it doesn't, until they don't, until they're flooded about three o'clock. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that concludes my presentation. I have to Happy to take some questions if y'all have any. Um, we'll also be available most of the day outside too. Thanks.